So welcome to the uh, What Makes a Campus Map Accessible webinar. This is Concept 3D, of course. My name is Michael Davis. Um, I'm going to be sort of the, the host kind of moderator, but uh, Andrew Tett is joining us today. He's going to be more of the person that's talking the most. Um, he's the product manager, so he's uh, super knowledgeable on accessibility, and that's one of his focuses is on accessibility. But I'll, I'll let him sort of introduce himself and let him tell you about himself. Tat, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Mikey. Um, I'm Andrew Tat. I am a product manager here at Concept 3D, um, heavily focused on a few areas, one of them namely being accessibility um, as, across all of our uh, maps and virtual tours. Cool. All right, so in this webinar, we're going to be talking about obviously what makes campus map accessible. Um, some introductions, we kind of just breezed past that right then. Uh, what disabilities are impacting your map and what you should be focusing on, uh, what the acronym POOR stands for and why it matters and sort of how we use that in our product design. And then we're going to have a little screen reading demo and then, of course, a questions and answer section. Cool. Tap, take it away. Yeah. Um, so just a little background. Uh, when, when we're talking about accessibility here in the United States, um, the US Census Bureau estimates around 47 million Americans have a disability of some kind. Globally, uh, the UN and the World Bank estimate around 650. Um, and the, the percentages are generally the same, um, whether you're looking kind of domestically or internationally, um, generally it's around 10% of people in the world have a disability of some kind. Um, when we think about developing solutions, accessible solutions um, for users, we're obviously thinking about users and um, they can, uh, there are kind of four main categories of um, accessibility that we think about. Uh, cognitive impairments, hearing impairments, vision impairments, and mobility impairments. Um, a lot of, some of these uh, you may be familiar with, things like deafness, blindness, colorblindness, um, but there's usually in, in designing and figuring out solution, accessible solutions, um, there's usually a bit more of a spectrum. And so you can have some level of hearing loss or you can have some level of vision loss, um, but not complete vision loss. Um, similarly to thinking about the, the end users, we're also thinking about how the end users might interact with uh, a map or virtual tour. Um, typically for web technologies that comes in the form at the basic level uh, comes in the form of keyboard control, um, kind of a flavor on, or not a flavor, but like a, a layer on top of keyboard control at our screen readers. Um, and then from our pers kind of our perspective, the, the, the way we design our maps and virtual tours, the text size, the color contrast, um, which we'll get into a little bit more uh, are some of the decisions we can make there. But yeah, also making, oh, oh go sorry. back, you're good. Um, but yeah, and then just, you know, correctly uh, setting up a web page, our maps are virtual tours so that whether a keyboard user or a screen reader user, um, everything can be focused and kind of navigated logically, um, which for us is, uh, top to bottom, left to right, almost as if you're reading a book. All right, it is poll time. So do you have an issue with your current campus map accessibility? I'm gonna be bringing up the polls here right now. All right, we got 75% voted. These are the last three. All right, I'll give, there's one last straggler that has yet to vote. We'll see if they will do so in a little bit. All right. So the results are in and uh, people are not really sure if they have, uh, issues with their map accessibility. So hopefully we'll be able to answer that question today. Uh, this, uh, 
Poor here is an acronym we use at Concept3D to kind of guide um, our development process in coming up with accessible solutions for our maps and tours. Um, the P stands for perceivable, O stands for operable, U for understandable, and R for robust. Um, I'll dive into more details around why this is important, um, but generally the uh, POR is a really good guide in terms of making sure that the solution you come up with is um, as accessible as possible. So for perceivable, um, we wanna make sure that there are multiple ways to both present and understand content, especially um, non-text content. So things like images here on the left-hand side, uh, you can have some, uh, you can have a text alternative um, to go along with that image, which describes what the image is um, showing. Um, and then on the right-hand side, you'll see in our tour platform here, at like a, a little audio bar. Um, so audio is one way of presenting the information, but then in the bottom right there, there's also a audio transcript button as well. Um, we also want to be able to present the inf information in uh, multiple, yeah, multiple ways. Um, so not only does the content have different ways of being presented, um, but then the overall platform can also be presented in a different way. So on our left-hand side here, we have our text-only map version of our interactive maps. It's the same content, same location data, um, just presented in a very simple kind of HTML um, text, very uh, structured way of uh, presenting the information. We uh, recently at Concept 30 have kind of shifted away actually from this separate experience, this separate text only map experience. Um, we try to build our interactive maps to be as accessible as possible out of the box now. Um, but just to kind of show you an example, of presenting content in different ways there. Um, and on the right hand side, you have an example of one of our locations. And if you were to go through it and hover over it with the screen reader, you'll see that uh, the, the text alternatives right back to screen reader users. The O uh, for operable um, mainly ensures that uh, no matter how users want to interact with our maps and tours or, or websites in general, um, that, that functionality is available to them. So on the left-hand side, we, we talked about keyboard control, keyboard navigation a little bit earlier. You can kind of see an example of that there on the left-hand side. Um, you can see the little like kind of blue, what we call focus ring, navigating through the sidebar and then opening a location there at the very end. Um, so we make sure that, you know, interacting with all these different elements on the on our maps is um, accessible. And then similarly, for something a little bit more complex on the right hand side, we have 2D content, something that isn't necessarily navigable top to bottom, left to right as of a book, because it's 2D, you're supposed to kind of move it around and uh, as you kind of want to explore. And so we provide arrow key controls and plus and minus controls for users to pan and zoom the map as well. Um, we also kind of similarly to presenting information and content in multiple ways, we also want to make sure that users, despite whether it's a keyboard or a mouse, or they wish to interact with something on screen itself, um, we make sure that we give as many options um, for, for users to interact as possible. So on the left hand side uh, is an example of our 360 maps, which are what we call like spinnable and tiltable, um, rotatable. It's a very 3D interactive experience, um, which is still, at, at least for me, pretty a, a new experience to figure out how to learn and control and like move the view around. And so we provide what we call single button controls there to make it easier um, to understand what users can do. Um, on the right hand side, you'll see an example of one of our virtual tours. Um, and um, in kind of what I see as like modern web design and, and techniques, um, there's a lot of auto playing content, whether it's audio or video, or in this case, a panorama. Um, but we do want to make sure that users are able to understand the content um, in the time that they think 
they need to understand it. And so providing mechanisms for them to turn on and off this automatic kind of functionality is also part of operability. The U for understandable, um, make sure that users can understand the content in a, in, in a timely manner. So going back to the example of opening up a location here, you can see when a user is tabbing through the sidebar, they go into a category, and then now they're going into a location right there. Um, you can't see it because it's, it's a kind of a snapshot view, but the next thing that grabs focus there is the location. Um, if you're clicking on a location with a keyboard, you're probably looking to focus immediately onto the location that you open and find information around that, 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 uh, that area. And so um, we'll go into it a little bit more in the demo later, um, but we, we move focus around in what we call a logical way so that if you open a location, the location grabs focus. If you close the location, it'll put you back into where you last left off in the sidebar. Um, so that's what we mean by like predictable way. Similarly, um, with all of us have probably had to fill out a form at some point, we probably you know missed the at sign or something in the email and being able to understand immediately what if your input was incorrect is pretty important. Um, and so uh, being able to help users avoid and correct their mistakes um, as timely as possible. So in this case, the error is right below uh, the email field so that they can reach it um, on the next navigation. Um, and we, we briefly touched on this earlier, good contrast versus bad contrast. Um, this is more of a design decision that we can make here at Concept3D. Um, you can kind of, the, the right side, bad contrast, a little harder to read is when foreground elements more closely match their background elements. Um, whereas good contrast, there's a bit more distinction between the foreground and the background. Um, this helps users with low vision um, that might struggle with uh, lower contrast uh, images, like on the right-hand side there. And then finally, R for robust. Um, no matter what technologies, what uh, devices that the user uses, um, we want to make sure that our maps and virtual tours or any sort of technology that we kind of make available is usable by whatever device or tech that the user wants to use. So different browsers, different um, desktop versus mobile, Android versus iPhone, uh, screen reader versus keyboard. We want to make sure that we're, we're marking up our maps and tours in a way that is uh, accessible to all users. All right, guys, we have another poll. Uh, which accessibility principles out of those four are your biggest uh, concern? Let me pull this poll up. Just waiting for the last two voters. Seems like right now, uh, operability is the biggest concern coming in at 67%, followed by understandable and robust. All right, there's the last vote. So there are your results. Operability is definitely the biggest concern um, for right now which begs the question, some people might um, be asking Tat, you know, how do I know how accessible my map is? And the answer to that would be. Yeah, I can, uh, I can give a quick demo to kind of show you, it seems like operability is kind of a main focus and kind of show you how to operate our one of our maps. Um, let me go ahead and share, oh, do you mind? Yep. There you go, Ted. You can share the screen now. Thanks. 
me make sure I'm sharing sound. Um, I once I start sharing my screen here, I won't be able to hear um, anything else that's going on. So um, bear with me. Let me. Can everyone see? Mikey, can you see the map? Yeah, that looks good. Perfect. Um, I'm, so today I'll be demoing um, our University of Colorado Boulder map. Um, CU Boulder is one of our clients pretty close to our headquarters here in Denver. Um, and uh, I'll be demoing it with Mac OS, Safari, and VoiceOver, which is one of the native uh, built-in screen readers for Mac OS. Let me go ahead and turn this on. VoiceOver on Safari. Univers Going to pause the voiceover readback there, but you can see here um, it's already kind of grabbed focus on our map there. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and walk you all through the top bar and what it looks like kind of navigating top to bottom, left to right. Um, you'll see it jump to the sidebar, and then we'll go ahead and try and dive into a location, open up a location, and um, maybe if I'll find out some information around what we're looking for. University of Colorado in University of Colorado Boulder link search. You are current. There are a few ways that screen reader users from our research and kind of uh, interviews navigate our map or web pages in general, um, providing what we call skip links so that they can navigate to the thing that they need right off the bat is um, one super helpful technique for screen reader users. And then the other option, as you'll see, when we dive into the top banner area, um, they'll navigate by heading. So we can mark up our maps in a way such that they can jump around from these headings. So the banner is one heading, the sidebar is another heading, um, and the map is a third heading. Heading isn't, sorry, heading isn't the correct term. Um, like landmarks is uh, is a better better term for that. but. I'm going to go ahead and just go through the top bar. I'm not going to use the skip links here. Link, sidebar, link, map, link, text only map, end of, skip links, header, banner, search, collapsed button, link, heading level one, east campus, button, main campus, button, Williams Village, button, copy map URL, button, print, collapsed, but end of, header, banner, navigation, close navigation, button, end of, navigation, main, sidebar, group. You are currently in a group. So here we are in the sidebar. I'm gonna go ahead and dive into buildings and probably jump into one of the academic buildings on campus. Locations, selected, tours, tab, two of sort. Default, sort, clear categories, button, locations, tab, pat, category, buildings, collapsed, but category, buildings, expanded, button. You are I'm actually also just gonna demonstrate um, one of the check boxes so we can bring up all the academic buildings on campus. Then I'll dive into the category. Back, button, buildings, map icon, image, buildings, empty, end of, navigation, navigation, back, button, build, build, end of, navigation, category, academic and research, collapsed, button, category, academic and research, unchecked, checkbox, checked. You are currently on. Um, so there are all the academic buildings there. I'm going to go ahead and go back to academic and research and dive in. Category, academic, category, academic and research, expanded, button, navigation, back, academic and academic, end of, location, aerospace, engineering, science. Let's go ahead and jump into, let's say, uh, let's maybe do computer science wing. Locate, location, locate, 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 location, computer science wing, ECCS button. Close details code. button, location information. Um, kind of similarly to what we were talking about before, um, presenting information in a logical way should the user have not wanted to jump into this location or accidentally jumped in, um, we put focus on the close button so that uh, users have uh, an immediate way to, to exit out of the location they just opened. Um, but I'll go ahead and move into the address and description here. Share location button, directions to location, heading level two, comp article. You address, 1111 Engineering Drive, description, the Engineering Center at CU Boulder is located at the corner of Colorado Avenue and Regent Drive. Go ahead and pause that read back. Um, but yeah, and then you can see like there are links down below and we'll be able to grab onto those. Departments. List 10 items. You, white Bullet 1 of 10. Link. Bold Center. White Bullet 2. Link. Chemical and Biological Engineering. You are currently on a link. 
And uh, I guess I'll suppose I'll just press on this link as well. That is, oh, let me actually. Chemical and biological engineering vertical. Back one. University of Colorado. I'm also going to demonstrate uh, closing out of the location real quick. And uh, I think that'll be the end of the demo. White bullet link. White bullet list 10 department address article heading left direction share locate close details button. Location computer science wing ECCS. And there we are back at the computer science wing. Voice over off. Thank you so much, Ted. That was awesome. And so, uh, yeah, that's actually, it's, it's always interesting to do a screen reading demo because, you know, so many people like actually like use it as their, their main way to consume media. So it's always nice to be like cognizant on uh, how they're consuming media so that you can um, sort of present it in the best way that you can. So that is actually the end of our webinar, which brings up the Q&A. So if you have any questions for Tet to answer, um, go ahead and ask them. Let's see. I'll just give a few little minutes for people to ask questions if they so choose. And you know, if you don't have any questions, you can also say that you don't have any questions in the questions thing. So maybe we can push this along if you don't have any questions. No questions. I suppose also if uh, if you do have any questions after the webinar, um, feel free to to email us. Um, my email is pretty straightforward. It's just tat at concept3d.com. Yeah, and there's also and mine is uh, Michael Davis at concept3d.com, and we also have a whole bunch of uh, help articles. You can find that at help.concept3d.com. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch about uh, accessibility, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, it looks like there's not many questions. So thank you so much for y'all's time. There's a quick survey at the end if you would like to let us know how we did. Um, if you liked the webinar, our names are uh, Mikey Davis and Andrew Tatt. If you didn't like the webinar, um, our names are David Mantleman. It was just him. So <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, guys. Have a, have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Bye-bye.